Welcome to A level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions for AP Physics 1. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of these topics and also you can have better understanding of these questions. In the last two video, we have discussed from question 1 to question 11 and for those solutions, you can go to the channel and you can search for AP Physics 1 Practice Exam 2 Part 01 and Part 02. And also, if you have any questions from any paper, you can leave your questions in comments and I will try to answer as soon as possible let's study together let's improve together question 12 says two cards of mass 2m and m approach each other head-on with the same speed v as shown in the figure above when the cards collide they hook together assuming positive momentum is to the right which of the following best represents the momentum of the card of mass m as a function of time before and after the collision so we have to focus on momentum of card with mass m so in this case you can see the momentum of mass to m this one is to the right so this momentum we have to take positive then this one has to be negative so simply we can use conservation of momentum in this case we can say momentum before this one has to be equal to momentum after collision momentum after collision so we are momentum is always conserved before collision and after collision if there is no net external force acting on the system so in this case this is our system and we are assuming that there is no net force acting on the system means no net force is acting on these two cards so the momentum before and momentum after has to be equal so if you look at momentum before in this case momentum of this car we are taking to the right positive because this is given in the question you have to take to the right as positive even if it is not given in the question by convention we take to the right positive and we take upwards also positive if it is not specified in the question so in this case it is specified in the question that momentum to the right is positive so we are taking to the right is positive so momentum of this card this is equal to 2 mv plus momentum of this card and this is m times minus v this momentum is negative and after the clean these two card they stick together so we can also draw here they stick together so we have card one the mass of this one is 2m and the mass of the second card is m they stick together and they have to move actually to the right to conserve momentum because net momentum before clear we have to the right so these two cars when they stick together net momentum has to be to the right after clear as well because momentum has to be conserved for this system because there is no net external force acting on this system so if we have this understanding so simply we can write down in this case m plus 2m times v so this is v so we can find out value of v from here we can say this is v final so we can avoid confusion v final we can say vf so vf in this case will be equal to mv so 2mv minus mv we will get mv divided by we have 3m so from here we can cancel m with m so simply we left with v by 3 so this is the final velocity and this is the velocity of cart of mass 2m and also velocity of cart of mass m and this is equal to v by theory so we can write down the momentum after collision of mass m so we can write down after collision momentum of m p of m this is equal to m times v by theory and this momentum is positive and before collision momentum of m so we can also write down before collision before collision momentum of m is p we can say before so we can write down here pf here we can say p initial p initial is equal to minus m so if you look at given options this is telling us that there is no change in momentum of mass m so this is incorrect this is telling us initially it is negative and after clean is still negative after clean it is positive so this is also incorrect magnitude is the same so this is also incorrect because magnitude after clean is lower 
so this is also incorrect so the answer for this question is c c is correct option because this momentum is minus mv and this momentum is mv by theory so the answer for this one is c question 13 says a student stands at one end of a raft floating in a pool with equally spaced marks along the bottom as shown above the student and raft they have the same mass the student walks to the opposite end of the raft which of the following best shows the final locations of the raft and student relative to the marks at the bottom of the pool assume that no drag force between the raft and the water means between water and raft there is no friction there is no drag force so the best way to answer this question is in this case it is given to us boy and the raft they have the same mass so we can mark the center of mass of the system first of all so in this case the center of mass of the raft we can mark first of all so this one will be along this line means at the center of the raft we are assuming it is a uniform so its center of mass is at its midpoint at its midpoint so center of mass of the raft is here now boy and the raft they have the same mass so it means the center of mass of this whole system it will be between these two between these two objects mean between boy and the raft so center of mass of this system we can mark somewhere here between them now we can also do the marking so this is 0 1 2 so this is center of mass is at 2.5 so this is location of center of mass of this system as in this case there is no net external force acting on the system so we can say no net external force acting on the system no net external force on the system so it means that the center of mass will stay at rest if center of mass is at rest if no external force is acting on the system center of mass stay at rest if the center of mass is moving with constant velocity if no external force acting on the system center of mass will keep on moving with the same constant velocity so this point is very important no net external force on the system as in this case they are at rest it means center of mass will stay at rest we can say center of mass stays at rest in this case so this is the main concept stays at rest because initially central mass is at rest and it will stay at rest if there is no net external force acting on the system if initially center of mass let's say it was moving with constant velocity then it will continue with the same constant velocity if no net external force acting on the system constant velocity so this concept is important so now we need to find center of mass has to be at 2.5 so this is the main concept center of mass has to be at 2.5 so we can mark here so in this case the boy is here so the center of mass will be along this line so it will be here so this center of mass is not at 2.5 so it means this option is not possible so this one is in correct and if we mark center of mass here so center of mass will be along this line center of mass will be between the center of boy and the center of mass of this raft so it will be here at this point at this point so and this point is also not at 2.5 it is not at 2.5 so it means this option is also incorrect so b is also incorrect if you look at c for c we can see center of mass of the raft is here so this is center of mass of the raft and center of mass of the boy is here so it is theory so the center of mass of the system it will be halfway it will be between these two centers so it will be here so this answer seems correct because this is also 2.5 so the answer for this question is c this is also incorrect because center of mass in this case is here 
here and this is 1.5 so this is also incorrect so this is how you can approach this problem i hope this question is clear to you question 14 says a circuit is designed with two resistors r1 is equal to 200 ohms and r2 is equal to 400 ohms and a battery with internal resistance r is equal to 10 ohms as shown above what is the relationship between three labeled currents means i i1 and i2 so first thing we need to understand as all these components they are connected in series it means charge has only one way to flow so current passing through each resistor has to be the same as these components they are connected in series so same current passing through each resistor each component same current so it simply means that i has to be equal to i1 and i1 has to be equal to i2 so then so far this question is d question 15 says when two charged massive objects are placed a distance r apart the gravitational force between them has magnitude f when the distance between the objects is increased to 2r the magnitude of gravitational force between them becomes f by 4 did electrostatic force between the objects also decrease to one fourth of its initial magnitude as a result of the change in position and y so for this question we need to understand first of all how gravitational force change with distance gravitational force is equal to g capital m small m over r square r is the distance between centers of these two masses from here we can simply see gravitational force is inversely proportional to r square and if you look at electrostatic force electrostatic force also obey inverse square law so this is divided by r square from here we can see electrostatic force means fe electrostatic force this is also inversely proportional to r square so it simply means that these two forces they obey inverse square law inverse square law very important concept inverse square law so the magnitude will decrease by the same amount but the magnitude will not be same decrease by same amount because they follow inverse square law but these two forces the magnitude will be different now if you look at option a it is given to us no so this is incorrect b is also incorrect no if you look at option c this is given to us yes it obey inverse square law so yes this is right uh, because both forces have the same one over r square dependence means both forces they obey inverse square law so it means option c is correct d yes this part is right because the gravitational force always equals no not equal so not equal so this is strong not equals electrostatic force at any given distance means they have different magnitude this is telling us they have the same magnitude so this option is also in correct question 16 says a clay ball and a rubber ball of the same mass are moving toward a glider that is at rest on a frictionless air track the balls have the same speed with the rubber ball moving to the right and clay ball moving to the left as shown above the ball strike the glider at the same time the clay ball sticks to the glider and the rubber ball bounces off glider which of the following indicates the direction of motion of the glider after the client and explain why it moves in that direction so for this question we simply need to understand the forces exerted by these two balls on the glider if one ball exert more force it means that this glider will move in direction of that force so let's try to calculate first of all change in momentum of these two balls if you look at rubber ball first of all so simply we can say rubber ball this ball is moving to the right so we can write on mass of this one is m and the speed of this one is v and we can also imagine glider at this point so this one is the glider so this one is glider when this rubber ball collide with this glider this bounces back we can just imagine speed after clean is also v and the mass of this one is m so the change in momentum of this ball 
if we take in this case to the left positive we will take this velocity positive so we have mv minus we have m so this velocity has to be negative so we have minus v now if we solve this one we will get mv plus mv so the change in momentum of the rubber ball this one is 2 mv and this change in momentum is to the left because this is positive so change in momentum of the glider it has to be to the right so change in momentum of the glider this one has to be to the right we can also calculate force on glider by the ball force on glider this one will be equal to the change in momentum of glider divided by time so change in momentum of the glider because change in momentum of rubber ball is to the left so change in momentum of the glider this one has to be to the right so it means force on glider is to the right and this force will be equal to 2 mv divided by delta t the time the rubber ball is in contact with the glider we can do the same for clay ball we can write down here we have clay ball for the clay ball we have glider here and the ball is moving to the left so ball has mass m and it has velocity v so in this case this ball is moving to the left so after clearing this stick with this one this stick with this one as this ball is moving to the left we can take in this case we can take the same direction as positive so we can take to the left also positive for this one so we can write down change in momentum change in momentum so we have this is as this speed is zero so we can say final change in uh, final momentum is equal to zero and we have minus and we have this is m and we have this is v so in this case we will get change in momentum is minus mv change in momentum so this is minus mv minus mv is simply telling us that change in momentum of the ball is to the right delta p is equal to mv and this is to the right change in momentum is to the right this one is for the ball for the clay ball now if you write down the force on glider due to clay ball force on glider this one has to be equal to mv divided by delta t as change in momentum of the ball is to the right so change in momentum of the glider this one has to be to the left change in momentum of the glider this one has to be to the left so in this case we can see the change in momentum of glider due to the clay ball it is smaller I mean this quantity is smaller and this quantity is greater so it means glider in this case this will move to the right so glider will move to the right so we can write down here glider moves to the right so glider moves to the right so this is the point we need to understand moves to the right why it moves to the right the reason is that 2 mv over delta t 2 mv over delta t this is due to the rubber ball the change in momentum means the force on the glider due to the rubber ball this is greater than force on glider due to clay ball so we can also write on delta t we are just talking about same amount of time so this is due to clay ball clay ball so it means rubber ball in this case will exert more force and direction of force on glider is to the right so this glider will move to the right so if you look at given options it is given to us for option a glider moves to the right yes this part is right because the magnitude of change in momentum of the rubber ball is greater than the magnitude of the change in momentum of the clay ball that's right because this change in momentum this one is greater than this change in momentum so it means option a is correct rest of the op option they are incorrect so then so far this question is a Question 17 says a lion is running at constant speed toward a gazelle that is standing still as shown in the top figure above. After several seconds the gazelle notes the lion and accelerates directly toward him hoping to pass the lion and force him to reverse direction. As the gazelle accelerates toward 
and past the lion, the lion changes direction and accelerates in pursuit of the gazelle. The lion and gazelle eventually each reach constant but different speeds. Which of the following sets of graphs shows a reasonable representation of the velocities of the lion and the gazelle as function of time? So the best way to answer this question is we can divide this one into three different parts. You can say this is one and this is second and this one is third. In first part, lion is moving to the left, to the left. And the speed of the lion is constant. So we can write on speed of lion is constant speed, constant speed. And it is moving to the left. As in this question, it is not given to us which direction we have to take positive. So by convention in this case, we will be taking to the right as positive. So we have to take in this case to the right as positive. So initially as line is moving to the left, so its initial velocity has to be negative. So it means C is not possible and D is also not possible. So answer can be A or answer can be B because this is negative. And also we need to understand gazelle initial velocity is zero. Initially it was at rest. Initially it was at rest. But in this case, if we look at this one, initially at rest for several seconds, after several seconds, I mean it's still at rest. Now this is telling us that this one is has certain velocity at time t is zero its velocity is zero after its speed is increasing accelerating this is incorrect so the answer has to be a for this one so this is how we can figure out but further we can discuss more about a at this point after a few seconds gazelle accelerates to the right so accelerates to the right so its velocity has to be positive. Accelerate velocity has to increase. Then gazelle at this point reaches constant velocity. So it reaches constant speed and also constant velocity because it is moving in the same direction. It is moving to the right. So it has to be positive, constant and positive. And velocity of gazelle here also has to be positive. And this is increasing velocity. It is accelerating. So this graph is correct. Now, if you look at motion of the lion, first of all, lion has constant speed, so it has constant speed. Then lion changes direction, so its speed will decrease to zero, and then it accelerates. So it changes the direction. So first of all, its velocity is constant. It is moving to the left. Then it changes direction. It changes direction. So its velocity becomes zero here and then it start increasing accelerate finally continue moving to the right with constant velocity v is positive so then so far this question is a so this is how we can understand so how we can eliminate so in this case you have seen we have eliminated c and d first of all then we have eliminated b as well so this one is the answer so this technique you can use in your exam to answer these questions quickly Question 18 says a spacecraft of mass 4000 kg is traveling in a straight line in the positive direction. Engines can be fired so that the force exerted on the spacecraft is in the positive or negative direction. The graph above shows data for the force during one interval. Which of the following is the best estimate of the net change in the speed of the spacecraft from time t is equal to 0 to time t is equal to 4 seconds? If you look at the graph, in this case, we can see the force is positive until 2 seconds. Then there is no force and then force is negative. So here in this interval, we have force positive from 0 to 2 seconds. We have force that is positive. So we can say this is an upward direction and between two to three seconds, F is equal to zero. There is no force. And between three to four seconds, there is force on the spacecraft, but direction of this force is negative. I mean, this force is downwards. We need to calculate the net change in the speed of the rocket. So in this case, the rocket will speed up so we can write down speed up and due to this force rocket will slow down so we have to find out net change in the speed in this interval so first of all in this case we can 
draw the best fit line so from here we can draw the best fit line so our best estimate can be triangle and here we can also draw the line so we can draw a horizontal line so this can be the best estimate for this interval of time so we can calculate area because area here is equal to change in momentum so this area is equal to change in momentum area under ft graph this is equal to change in momentum so we can calculate this area this area is representing change in momentum so this is delta p and this delta p is positive so this area is also change in momentum and this change in momentum is negative and this area we can simply calculate this is area of triangle so we have one half we have time this is two means x-axis the base of this triangle time we have the height of triangle that is equal to 1000 so in this case simply we will get 1000 so this is change in momentum means this is kg meter per second or we can say this is Newton second and this area we can also calculate this change in momentum will be equal to area of rectangle so we have time that is equal to one seconds and we have force that is about 500 so this is negative so in this case we will get negative 500 newton second so we need to calculate total change in momentum so we can say delta p total delta p total in this case will be equal to 1000 plus plus this is minus then this become minus so we have minus 500 so we will get total change in momentum this is equal to 500 newtons second so this is total change change in momentum we also need to understand change in momentum is equal to m times delta v we need to calculate delta v so delta v simply will be equal to 500 divided by 4000 so we have 4000 so these two zeros we can cancel with this one and so simply we left with five so we can simply cancel here we will get in this case this will be equal to about 0 0.125 meters per second so this delta v is positive so then so far this question has to be b and this is how you can calculate question 19 says a rocket is continuously firing its engines as it accelerates away from earth for the first kilometer of its ascent the mass of fuel ejected is small compared to the mass of the rocket for this distance which of the following indicates the changes if any in the kinetic energy of the rocket the gravitational potential energy of the earth rocket system and the mechanical energy of the earth rocket system so in this case first of all we need to understand as rocket in this case is accelerating upward so the kinetic energy of the rocket is increasing so this is simply you can imagine this one is the rocket as rocket is accelerating upwards so it is given to us it is accelerating upwards so it simply means that its speed is increasing as speed is increasing it means that kinetic energy of the rocket is increasing as rocket is also gaining height it also means that gpe is also increasing we can also say delta ke this is positive change in kinetic energy is positive and change in gpe is also positive and so kinetic energy is increasing of the rocket and gpe of earth rocket system is also increasing now we need to understand mechanical energy me mechanical energy mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy gravitational potential energy change in mechanical energy as this sum is positive means changing kinetic energy is positive and change in gpe is also positive it means that change in ke is also positive means the change in me is also positive so me is also increasing so all these three types of energies they are increasing so answer has to be a kinetic energy of the rocket is increasing and potential energy of the system is increasing and system mechanical energy is also increasing
So the answer for this question is A. Question 20 says block 1 is attached to a spring and oscillates on a horizontal frictionless surface. When block 1 is at a point of maximum displacement, block 2 is placed on top of it from directly above without interrupting the oscillation. And the two blocks stick together. How do the maximum kinetic energy and period of oscillation with both blocks compared to those of block 1 alone? So in this case simply first of all we can sketch. So we have first of all one spring and one block is attached with this one. And when this block is at the maximum displacement, so simply we can imagine at this point maximum. So here we can say the minimum displacement. We place an other block on the top of first one. So we can redraw this. And so when the first block is at this point, we place another block on the top of this. Now we need to compare the time period of these two and we need to compare the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy in these two cases. We can say this is case 1 and we can say this is case B. For time period we need to understand for oscillating spring mass system, time period is equal to 2 pi m over k. So 2 pi m over k. And kinetic energy we need to understand. Kinetic energy means the kinetic energy is the energy of the system, spring mass system when the block is at this point. And at this point speed is maximum. So at equilibrium kinetic energy is also maximum. And at this point, kinetic energy is zero at extreme point, but EPE is maximum. EPE is maximum because displacement is maximum. And so in this case, simply EPE will be converted into kinetic energy and then kinetic energy will be converted into EPE and this process will repeat again and again. So if you get EPE in this case, EPE, EPE is equal to one half kx square. In this case, k is not changing, x is not changing, it means EPE remains constant and KE is equal to EPE. KE is equal to EPE. They just change the positions but total energy, we can also say total energy is equal to kinetic energy, total E, this is equal to kinetic energy at equilibrium and total energy is equal to EPE at extreme position, mean at maximum displacement. So they just energy change when the block is at this point system has EPE and when the block is here system has kinetic energy and so on. So this process keep on repeating. And so in this case as this one is not changing it means kinetic energy also will not change. We can also say kinetic energy is equal to one half kx square. Uh, this remains constant. Ke also remains constant if we place another block on the top of first one without disturbing the system. And also in this case we are ignoring there is no friction. So kinetic energy will remain constant but time period will get smaller. Time period will get longer because when m increase it means time period will increase. So Ke has to be the same. So A is not possible, B is not possible, C same, yes it is possible but this one is wrong. Time period has to get longer, greater. So the answer for this question is D. So the main concept is you need to understand this formula and you need to understand total energy is equal to EPE when the block is at maximum displacement and total energy is equal to Ke when the block is at equilibrium and when the block is again at maximum displacement total energy is equal to EPE again and this process keep on repeating as in this case x is the same k is the same it means Ke also is same so the answer for this question is D. So we have done 20 questions from this practice exam and these 20 questions are very useful for your AP Physics 1. So go through these questions, try to understand where you have questions, you need more help, you can leave your questions in comments and I will try to answer as soon as possible. See you in next video.